anyone that look at a, at a flow chart like this one that is describing the immune defenses, the adaptive branch of the immune defenses, you definitely conclude that this can be quite complicated. So let's try to break it down into parts so you can actually better understand it. So let's move like back in time here so we can go like step by step in order to explain you guys what the adaptive defenses are. So this is like a specific branch of the immune defense. So you're going to have the innate defenses, which are um, non-specific, and you're going to have the adaptive defenses of the immune system that are specific to certain types of pathogens. I'm going to use a little bacteria here as an example of of the adaptive defenses or how the immune response can be mounted against the bacteria. The adaptive defenses can be divided into two branches, the humoral immunity and the cell-mediated immunity. I'm going to cover the humoral, humoral immunity first, and I'll bring you like attention to the word humoral here. The word humor means fluid. The most important fluid in your body is blood. That means, or that should like be a good hint, that the humoral immunity we involve blood. Of course, the cell mediated will involve cells. We're going to get into more details about each one of them. So before I get into humoral immunity, let's take a closer look at the bacteria that I drew um, at the very top of this flow chart here. I put these orange spikes around and I put that for a reason. Because if you actually take a closer look at these orange spikes, you're going to see that, like, that they are actually proteins proteins that are found on the surface of this bacteria, and these proteins are called antigen determinants, or epitopes. They essentially are the flags that your immune defenses can, can recognize as foreign. The word antigen means antibody generator. So these guys, these proteins, these epitopes that are found in the surface of bacteria, or protozoans, or any infectious agent, are what are the flags that can be recognized, and these flags will be used to generate antibodies, thus antigen. So, but who's going to recognize these antigens? Who's going to recognize these flags? Well, in the humoral immunity, who the the, the cells that can actually recognize the the enemy, the, the the bacteria that is trying to invade your body, are the B cells. Let's say that this bacteria here was a streptococcus pneumoniae um, bacterium, the ones that cause sore throat. The antigen determinants or epitopes would be M proteins. That's just the name that these orange structures will get. And these M proteins will bind to specific parts of the B cell. Each B cell has a membrane antibody that can bind to a specific epitope. You don't have just one specific membrane antibody throughout the entire immune system. Each B cell has a different membrane antibody. So on my other B cell that I'm going to draw here, you can see that this guy, instead of having like a triangular and orange shaped um, membrane antibody, it has a red rectangular shaped membrane antibody. This cell right here can recognize a different type of antibody than this one of antigen than this other cell right here. So the membrane antibody of my orange B cell here will actually bind to an epitope of the bacteria. And that occurs by chance only. So by chance, the M protein of the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria can actually bind with the membrane antibody of my B cell and can activate the the, that B cell in a very unique way. So that specific epitope here will not trigger, will not activate this cell right here. So as you can see, you have a certain specificity associated with the humoral immunity. So what happens next here? Well, after you have the activation of that B cell, these B cells can become memory B cells. They're essentially clones. They have the same membrane antibody, the same orange molecules here as their mother cell. And by cloning these um, B cells on a future infection, you can actually have a greater army of B cells that are able to recognize the infectious agent 
and not only like one cell like you have on the first exposure. On the second exposure, these memory B cells represent the army that are ready to recognize the enemy. All right, so, but that doesn't fight the infection. That just gives you protection for a future infection. How are you gonna fight the infection? Well, the other route that these B cells can follow after being activated by the membrane antibody is to become what we know as effector cells. These effector cells are the cells on the humoral immunity that can fight the pathogen. On the case of the humoral immunity, these effector cells are called plasma cells. You're gonna have an effector cell on the cell-mediated immunity as well with a different name. But in the case of the humoral immunity, those are the plasma cells. And if you remember what I said earlier, you know that the antigens stand, that the word antigen stand for antibody generators. Well, once you have the activation of the membrane antibody in the B cell that differentiates into a plasma cell, this plasma cell starts to produce millions and millions and millions of antibodies. These antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins. There are different kinds of antibodies, different functions of antibodies. But the one thing that these guys do, if you can generalize the function of antibodies, is that they can actually get the bacteria and coat the bacteria with, uh, this, uh, with the antibodies and essentially inhibit the production of the bacteria. They can neutralize the bacteria. They can actually precipitate the bacteria and make it sink down. There's a, like, a, a variety of ways in which these antibodies can make the multiplication of this bacteria more difficult. Eventually, this humoral immunity is enough to fight the infection. And you can get rid of the disease just through the humoral immunity. So let's move now uh, to the cell-mediated immunity. The cell-mediated immunity, as the name says, you're going to depend on uh, cells mediating the response, not antibodies, not just molecules floating in blood, but actually cells delivering the final punch to the, to the infectious agent, the bacteria in case. So in the cell-mediated immunity, what you have is you, you're going to have these phagocytic cells that can engulf the pathogen or the infected cell. Imagine a cell in your body that got infected with a virus. This phagocytic cell can also swallow that infected cell up. And then once they do that, you can have some of those antigens that were present in the, in the bacteria expressed on the membrane of that um, phagocytic cell. Once that, that happens, you can see the little orange spikes that I do right, right here. Um, and they represent the expression of these antigens on the surface of that phagocytic cell. This cell at this point becomes an antigen presenting cell. There are several types of cells in the body that can become APCs, antigen presenting cells. You're gonna have the dendritic cells, you're gonna have the macrophages, any cell that can phagocyte the pathogen and express the antigen on its surface can become an antigen presenting cell. Well, but the question then is, are they presenting this antigen to whom? Well, they are specifically presenting that, that to two subgroups of lymphocytes. But this time, the lymphocytes are not B cells. They are T cells. So they are the lymphocytes of the type T. So the two groups are the CD8 naive T cell or the CD4 naive T cell. Um, you're probably wondering like T cells with like one's called CD8 and the other one's called CD4. Yeah, the CD8 and CD4 which stands for uh, cell differentiation factor. It's just like proteins that are found on the surface of this lymphocytes that make them belong to one population of cells or the other. Now, what's going to happen next here? Well, the CD8 naive T cell can become a memory cytotoxic T cell the same way the B cells on my humoral immunity became memory B cells. And the reason why you want to have that, again, is to have some sort of memory somehow to remember the identity of the, the 
pathogen of the bacteria that you just swallow on a future infection, and then you have an army of memory cytotoxic T cells on a secondary infection, making it easier for your body to fight that disease or uh, kill the bacteria before you have any development of the disease. The, the other route uh, these CD8 naive T cells can go is to become effector cells. And in that case, they're just going to be called cytotoxic T cell. Cyto means cell, and toxic just implies toxicity. So this cell can be toxic to other cells. Essentially, what these cells can actually do, it can get in direct contact, cell mediation, cell mediation in direct contact with the bacteria, and this cytotoxic T cell is responsible for killing the bacteria. Different from antibodies following in the humoral immunity. So those are like key difference between the humoral and the cell mediated immunity. So the cytotoxic T cell destroy the pathogen directly or can destroy like an infected cell, a cell in your body that got infected with a virus. Well, what happens on the other branch here? On the other uh, sub-branch of the cell mediated immunity, the CD4 naive T cell becomes a memory helper T cell. And they get their name helper because they're going to assist in the response. These guys are the memory ones that are like on a future immune, uh, uh, infection, they can remember the identity of the pathogen that activated them. But if they're not becoming memory helper T cells, they are becoming effector helper T cells. And what these effector helper T, T cells are doing, they're helping, and they're helping via chemical stimulation. This chemical stimulation is way more complex and, and, and goes beyond the scope of this podcast, but it gives you an idea of how they're gonna assist the, your ability to fight the infection. One thing of this chemical stimulation can do, it can stimulate these non-specific killers to multiply at a faster pace. So even like the, the, there are types of cells known as macrophages that are part of the innate immunity that kill without any sort of specificity, the natural killer cells that are also part of the innate immunity that kill without any sort of specific uh, specificity associated with them that can eliminate the bacteria for you. But again, this is the innate immunity right here. They will kill generic stuff uh, found in your body. Eventually, they can find the bacteria. But in some cases, you actually need like a more specificity associated with it. Meaning, for example, the cytotoxic T cell here that recognizes this specific antigen right here and can find only the bacteria that express that specific antigen. These guys are more generic, but they still help. All right. So, I'm going back here a little bit. Uh, what are the other chemical stimulation that these helper T cells will do for you? Well, the other thing they will do, they will help on the co-stimulation of the CD8 naive T cell. This step right here, these steps right here, in many cases they cannot occur without the co-stimulation of the helper T cell. In some cases, the antigen presenting cell, it's not enough to promote the differentiation of the naive T cell into a cytotoxic one. So this helper T cell will help, will add to the activation of the CD8 naive T cell and promote the differentiation of that naive T cell into cytotoxic. So the other thing that this helper T cells will do they will also co-stimulate the B cells because in some cases the epitopes themselves are not enough to create this pathway here. So you depend on some sort of chemical stimulation so that this pathway down here can occur. Um, and more important as a, uh, uh, is that like these B cells themselves can also like help on the cell mediated immunity. Say what? Yeah, I said it correctly. These B cells can help on the cell mediated immunity. They can actually present antigens to activated helper T cells. Once they've been primed with that um, epitope, they can 
help these helper T cells to say like, hey, can you actually like work on your chemical stimulation again and help it don't like recruit more non-specific killer cells or actually promote more differentiation of CD8 T cell into cytotoxic T cells? Yes, they can do that. These like B cells, as they pr um, present the antigen to the helper T cells, they create like a bridge between the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity. So it is safe to say that these helper T cells are the keystone of the immune response. So without the helper T cells, you have no connection between the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity. And more importantly, you may not have the co-stimulation that can actually trigger this pathway here or the co-stimulation that is necessary to trigger this pathway right here. Without the helper T cells, your immune system is doomed. That is essentially where the HIV virus that causes AIDS will, will find um, uh, its, its home. The, the HIV virus kills the helper T cells and pretty much destroys this network of interactions that you have between the cell-mediated immunity and the humoral immunity. I know this is a complicated subject, and this is just an overview of the overall response, but I hope it makes it easier for you to understand where there's many like types of CD4 cell, T cell, and B cells are located in the body and what are their roles. Thank you.